just a little bit of olive oil to preheat in this pan. We want a nice heat to sear the sausage we're getting ready to put into our gumbo because we want those bits to go into the roux. And the roux is the heart of your gumbo. If you don't have a good roux, you better scrap it and start all over again. Now for the sausage, I like to do it in the coins so you can get a nice, good, chunky thing. I use smoked sausage. I've seen, I've used kielbasa before, um, deer sausage. It can work with just about anything. It depends on what you've got. And the best part about gumbo, it uses up all the veggies that are in your refrigerator. There is no exact science to what you're supposed to have in gumbo. And you use whatever meat you can find on sale. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put these in here as flat as I can. Each one, yes, they're big chunks. They're gonna help to season that roux up. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna let this cook until you get a nice brown. You're gonna leave it alone. They get a nice brown on one side. You're gonna stir it, get a nice little brown on the other side. Even though it's pre-cooked, this is what I do to give my roux flavor. That's the start of it. If you're using chicken, you're gonna do the same thing with the chicken. And then you gotta pull it out when you got it brown, put it in a bowl, make you know, make sure it's not too greasy. That's why I didn't put that much olive oil in there. Same thing with chicken, beef, whatever you find on sale. This is your sausage when it's done. I like to take it to that point. Andouille is another sausage you can use that actually adds a nice little kick to it. A lot of people think that if you're gonna have gumbo, you have to have andouille. That's not necessary. This right here is my pan. See the bits in there? I want those bits in my gumbo. Those bits are not gonna go to waste. I did put the sausage on the um, paper towels because I didn't want any added oil that's going to disturb the way that I do this. Now, most people do about a half a cup of oil. I prefer to add in some unsalted butter mixed with my oil because I like the creaminess that it gives. You're gonna do something to the effect of about a half of a cup. Once you get it down there where it needs to be, you're gonna throw in, this is the process that comes together and one of the most, most vital. You're gonna throw in about a cup of the flour. I like to use all purpose because I do not want any added salt to my my cooking. I like to add what I like to add and all purpose has the baking soda and the salt. Now what I have done is I have pulled up all those bits off the bottom right there. Now I'm going to take and I'm going to start whisking in about one cup. This is your most important part of the entire thing. This is your roux, people. You don't want it too hot because you're gonna burn it. You don't want it too cold because it's not gonna burn off the flour taste. Now, when you get it to this point right here, you need to turn it down to about medium to medium low. The roux is one of those things that needs to be cooked low and slow. I actually prefer to take mine all the way to low and I will stand here, I kid you not, and whisk this for about 15 to 20 minutes until it gets a really, really nice coffee brown flavor. If you burn this, you better start all over again. See, I've turned it down to low and it's still burning. Look at that, the white is already starting to turn to a light color. But, I pulled the bits up off the bottom and I will sit here and whisk this for approximately 15 to 20 minutes. I've already turned it down to low. I'm gonna turn it down a little bit lower because I'm not fond of those bubbles that are coming up like that because I don't wanna have to start all over again. If you burn that roux, you're gonna have to start all over again. If you don't take it far enough, it's not gonna have that nice texture. It's gonna have a raw flour taste to it. You don't want that. You want something that's gonna be mouth in your mouth, slap your mama good. This is the roux at five minutes. You see it started to take on a nice little brown color. It's a very light brown color, but it's already picked up all the bits off the bottom. You must constantly stir this on the low to medium low heat or you are going to have it burn and start all over again. I cannot stress that enough. We'll see you again in about five more minutes. All right, this is actually the 15 minute mark. You see that real pretty caramel color that's to it? To me, that's not deep enough. I know that I can take this deeper into a darker brown and it's going to give that gumbo that flavor and it's gonna be well worth standing over this stove whisking this nonstop. You have right now a nutty taste when the flour is 
cooked off you have a really really nice nutty taste plus the reason why I use that butter in there that unsalted butter is because browned butter makes a very nice sauce of its own okay right now we're at the 20 minute mark you see how pretty that is that is like a nice creamed coffee now the reason why I'm going to stop it at this point even though I do like to get it darker is because I used an olive oil butter mixture. Had I used the vegetable oil and butter mixture or just vegetable oil, you could have taken it to a, an even darker, richer color. But at this point right here, if I take it any darker, I'm going to burn it. And the last thing we want to do is burn it and start all over again because right now we're at 20 minutes. I'm going to remove it from the heat, let it sit back there and cool for a moment while I cut up my onions and my celery and other things like that that go in it. You could pre-cook them, but if I've got to let my room cool to begin with, I just go ahead and just take it off the heater, let it do its thing, and I'll be back in just a minute. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this pan back on. Now that I've let it sit off the heat for about three minutes, because I'm pretty quick at chopping up the veggies, do you see the beautiful coffee color that has come there? It is because at, when I took it off the heat, the pan continued to cook it without fear of burning it. This is beautiful coffee. That is a roux that is just amazing. You see how dark and beautiful that is? It smells like cooked popcorn because of the butter that I put in there. Now what I'm going to do with this is I just stirred it up to remix it. I've got it set on medium low. I'm going to bring it back up to temp. And what I have done is I have cut up two large sweet onions, about a half a stalk of celery. Now when I do celery, I start at this end and I, after I've washed it and I do it all the way down, I include the leaves. There's so much flavor in the leaves of the celery. This right here is where most of your flavor lies. Now. This right here, these are just bits and pieces of the ends of the bell pepper and around the stems of the bell pepper that a lot of people just throw away. I chop them up and I freeze them because when they're going in gumbo or they're going in soups or they're going in stews, it doesn't matter if they have that crunch. So why waste so much of the bell pepper? This is just diced tomatoes that I'm going to add after I have incorporated these and started to get these wilting. I'm going to put... A can of diced tomatoes in there only because I have them already if you have fresh tomatoes that works even better also I found two containers of veggie broth that was near their expiration date so I'm going to use that now if I had put chicken in here I would have used chicken stock and I usually make my own and keep it in the freezer but why waste it I've got it let's use it I also have some tomatoes that we found on clearance that we never got to eat and they were to the point I was going to put them in the dehydrator. I bit into them and they are still very very fresh. They're not bad so instead of doing that since I don't have whole tomatoes to put into the gumbo mine aren't ripe yet so I'm going to use these and I'm going to use this and between the two it's going to bring up out enough of a fresh flavor. Gumbo is about using what you've got. Use what you have. Don't spend thousands or or I know that's exaggerating, but don't go out and spend 40 or $50 on gumbo. Use what you have. If you have carrots getting ready to go bad, put the carrots in there. I would also do not dice my veggies. I cut them at a decent size because I know they're going to sweat down and they're going to be nice and sweet and tender, but I'm not going to dice them because if I want to dice them, I'm going to put them through a... a, a Food a food processor because I, I want to be able to taste my stuff. Now what I've done right here is I've put my veggies in here and it's set on medium. I am putting them in the roux and stirring them around to coat them because what will happen as they start to sweat is they will start to release some of their water, natural water to it. And it's going to make that roux almost like a gravy consistency. And that's when I'm going to start adding my other things. But right now, all I'm going to do is pay attention to this and get these sweating on low and slow. It's probably going to take about 10 to 20 minutes, depending on the, the intensity of some of these vegetables, because these are not as homegrown as I like. I had to buy these. They are locally grown, but they're not from the neighborhood farmer's market. They are from Florida, I believe. So we will go and let this go for 10 to 20 minutes and then we're going to go from there. 
Okay, so it's been about six minutes, and as you can see, it looks almost like a glue texture, but it, the veggies are completely coated with that roux mixture. And they've started cooking down. They've started making it to where it wants to stick together, almost like if you were to pick it up, even though don't do that because it's very hot, you could pick it up and shape it into a very sticky ball as if you were making bread waiting to add flour. This is where we are with this. What I'm going to do at this point, I'm adding those tomatoes. That's a pretty pop of color. Yes, it is. I'm going to add these tomatoes with the juice, and then I'm going to add our veggie broth because remember, it was on the verge of, of going bad. So, not bad, but just out of date. So, I'm going to add the veggie broth. I actually prefer the chicken broth. I don't like beef broth. It's too salty, but to each their own. And I never use bouillon cubes. Never. That's nothing but a chunk of salt. And if you're going to do that, do not salt your food until after you've tasted it. So what we've got pretty much is approximately nine cups of liquid. Now, the reason why we do this is so that this will continue to cook down. These tomatoes will start to cook down. And I'm not going to add the meat yet because... I want this stuff, I want all of these flavors to meld. You see that pretty color? That's the reason why we had to get the roux the way that we did. That nice coffee color has now given it almost a beef stock look. So I'm also at this point, I'm going to throw in. Oh, you just lost your spoon in it. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Okay, not a problem. That's not a problem. This is life. <laughs> that's my life, ain't it? <laughs> but that's okay. That shows you things happen. All right, at this <laughs> point, I'm putting in two bay leaves. What the bay leaves are going to do is it gives it that fresh herb taste and smell. It is just amazing. I'm also going to use, where a lot of people, you can make up your own stuff. You can put chili powder, whatever you want to in there. I love the taste of Old Bay. Old Bay seasoning to me when I boil crabs is just, it's amazing. I mean, you put the potatoes and the corn, corn cobs all together and it's just great. So I'm going to take approximately two teaspoons of it. Now I'm going to check this later, but see this Old Bay seasoning not only has the spiciness to it, I can't make it too spicy because of Sarah. <laughs> She's a wimp. I am. That's why I'll add jalapenos or Tabasco to mine later. I don't do Louisiana hot sauce because it is a salty heat and I'm not huge on salt. This does have salt to it, but it also has a lot of your spices in it, so I don't have to do it. And if you got it, use it. And that's what the, that's what I'm doing now. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to let the, we're going to let this simmer for approximately 45 minutes to an hour on medium heat and just let these veggies cook down and when we come back I'm going to end up adding the um, sausage to it and our chick, um, not chicken but our crab imitation crab meat and any other seasonings and the gumbo filet and stuff like that but in that downtime is when you cook your rice I'm getting ready to go cook my rice okay now it's only been about 30 minutes but part of the reason why I wanted to do this is because see some of these have already started popping I wanted these cherry tomatoes to get to a certain point where they were ready to burst and explode with flavor before I added the okra Sarah and I found some locally grown okra for only 99 cents a pound it's local we know it's good so I went ahead and I chopped it up I would say that's probably about four cups and what this, if you look, it's already got a thickness to it, but now, as we let it cook for probably about another 30 minutes, this okra is also going to help to thicken it up. See that? Look at the difference. Is that not pretty? You've got the red and the green, and the other vegetables have already sweat down to a point to where they're nice and they're, they're limber. You're not going to get hard chunks in it. And then we're going to let this cook for about 30 more minutes. Once the okra starts getting soft, I'll come back, I'll add the sausage, I'll add the imitation crab meat, and let it cook with a lid on and simmer for about 30 more minutes to marry those flavors together and to heat that sausage and the other meat completely through, and then we'll be ready to eat. 
Okay, it's been about 30 minutes, and the okra is really, it's got a nice, we don't like ours, ours, ours cooked to death. As you can see right there, that, that's beautiful. It's a nice bite size. It's not going to be crunchy, but it's not going to be a pure soggy, slimy mess when you put it in your mouth either. I've already pulled out the two bay leaves because I'm the world's worst about forgetting the bay leaf. Now, if you have fresh garlic, you would add it when you added the tomatoes and the okra. And the reason why is if you cook it too long and you cook it too hard or it burns, it gets a very bitter taste. This is not the fresh garlic. This is garlic that I just pick up at Dollar Tree because it's cheaper this way and it's already done. And I don't have any fresh garlic on hand right now. So I'm going to throw probably about two teaspoons in there. You see, yeah, my teaspoons are more like tablespoons. Yeah, yeah, okay, get over it. <laughs> then I'm going to add in the imitation crab meat. Which we've shredded. Yeah, which I, I, I took it out of the big chunks. Lewis Kemp makes them. A lot of people make them. And it's actually just fish pressed to taste like crab. And put some sausage in there. Now look at that. All we're going to do is we're going to let this heat until your sausage is warm back through. You got a warm going through your crab meat. I can't afford fresh lump crab meat. Sorry, y'all. But this works just as well. Look how thick and beautiful that gumbo is. My rice is already made. Now, I will tell you when you make rice, if, if you can remember, throw a bay leaf in your water. It changes the entire complexity of your rice. I don't put any salt in it because this is going to have enough salt in it and enough flavor. I want to be able to taste my gumbo and have a nice smooth rice, not an overpowering rice. Now, if I'm eating just rice, I'm cooking it in chicken broth, I'm adding my salt, I'm adding my bay leaf. But for this, I just do it in plain water and bay leaf and it is amazing. It gives it a nice fluffy texture and it will look very very smooth and very very creamy this is this is my rice right here you see how that's just coming apart it's not sticky if you like sticky that's fine I don't and it's just plain rice and it's going to be beautiful with this and I'm not going to add the two together because I made an extra large batch because it freezes so well this gumbo will be able to go into the freezer and feed us several meals and it will be a home made meal so if you make it let us know what you think about it leave your comments don't tell me it's not gumbo i really don't care if you think it's your version of gumbo or not gumbo is like shepherd's pie you put all your leftovers in it this is local it's fresh it freezes well enjoy <laughs>